Yes. Uh, let's just slide on over then. Two. Two. Game Club. Oh, Game Ladies Club. and gentlemen, each week yep. we uh, we play a video game and we play a chapter or a segment or a timed interval of that video game and mm-hmm. then we talk about it. Yep. It's like a book club and you can play along with us as well just by joining the Discord down below yep. or jumping in live into the chat. You can share your experiences with us in the game. You can play along with us chapter for chapter and, uh, uh, you know, tell us how you did. Tell us how you played it. Tell us how you felt yes. about playing it. You should do it. You should do it. And... We just wrapped up uh, the wolf among the wolf us. among us, and now we're playing control. Yes, the so, long-awaited playing of control. I've wanted to play this game yeah. for a while, so, and now we're into it. So you're playing it on Epic. I'm playing it on Epic. I bought. No, it. I'm playing it on Steam. Oh wow, on the Steam Deck? No, just oh, on the okay. upstairs okay. PC. You should try it on the Steam Deck. I would. Oh, well, then again, it'll take you five days to install it. So yeah, yeah, never mind. Um, I have it on Epic. I believe. I don't know. I think it was given away on Epic. I Yeah, it was. I have it somewhere. Anyways, I was like looking on the Xbox and I was like, oh, it's like $4. <laughs> so I bought it. It's not the... Are you playing the Ultimate Edition or just the regular edition? I, How much did it cost? I don't know. When did you buy it? I don't know. Oh, you bought it a while ago? Yes. Okay. Uh, definitely a while ago. I mean, I've got Steam. Oh, it's Ultimate Edition. Okay, so I'm playing the regular edition, not mm-hmm. the Ultimate. But I think the Ultimate Edition just is like, it's 4K and it's 60 FPS and it has the DLCs built into it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Hmm. I bought the regular version and then I saw, oh, the DLCs were on sale for like $2 each. Yeah. So I bought them. But... I bought them after I played the first chapter. Yeah. Because the DLCs are like side missions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any in the first chapter. Uh, Doesn't seem like it. I didn't see any in when I played it, but then I didn't have the DLC till after. So I don't know. Anyways. Somehow uh I can play this game upstairs on the upstairs PC, right cranked to the nuts. Full ray tracing. Full everything. Yakuza would do stream tearing. And Yakuza would do stream te- stream stream Screen tearing. tearing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and for some still for some reason I can't do HDR to my TV. Need a new TV. I think it might just be the HDMI cord maybe. Oh, you need a freshie? I might need a freshie. Even though that is a freshie that's supposed to be like a uh like full E HDMI cable. Oh yeah. That should be able to output uh that. Maybe your output from your computer's like yeah, maybe too new or something like that. Maybe I need to do the DV. Maybe the HDMI won't output HDR. I have to do the DVI. Oh yeah, that could be it. Because the uh, not the DVI, but the Display Port DP. Yeah, because I have the other monitor plugged in Display Port, and that'll do HDR. That might be what it is then. Yeah, could be. Um, wow. What a game. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> I was like, as soon as it oh. started, I was like, damn, why did I take so long to play this? Yeah, right? Oh my God. Right? Like It was hitting all the like things I enjoy for like movies and yes. stuff like that. Yes. Like, what's happening? Why is it so weird? Uh, why, you know, just everything. The yeah. mood, the atmosphere, everything. It's, it's Yeah, it's really eerie. It's really mysterious. Nothing makes well, any it, sense. It starts off like very weird with their cutscene and like the pyramid and the voices yeah. and everything. But then you control, start controlling Jesse. Is that her name? Yes. And you're just sort of like in the Bureau of Control and there's nobody there and the alarm's going off and you know, there's nothing really happening too weird. No. Just like where is everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. And you start collecting your little documents and reading them and whatever and the only weird thing that happened was like oh the door opened automatically that was weird yeah but everything else is kind of like whatever but then the first really weird thing that happened is like you finally encounter this janitor guy Mm -hmm. and he's like oh you're here for the interview i'm gonna be your boss go through the door take the (laughs) elevator and you go you continue going on and i'm like wait i'm back where i started from yeah right and then i was like wait a minute so let me go back and see how this connects. And you go back and it's like, wait, there's a wall there now. <laughs> like the building's all shifting around and it's like, oh, it's going to be like this. We're in the back rooms or something. Yeah, now. yeah. I didn't actually try and go back. I was like, oh, we wrapped around and my head, my brain just made it logical. Like, oh, we just wrapped around the back of the elevator and I came see. back through and now no, the elevator's open. Where we came out, I was like, wait, we couldn't have come out here because I came through the door I went in. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, what the fuck? 
So then I ran back and was like, oh, there's a wall where we were. I can't even go back all the way. So when then I went back downstairs because you can run past the elevator and go down. Yeah. I looked around and everything and nothing really changed downstairs, but it was still weird anyways. The goal now is to go have our interview and we're supposed to go talk to the director. Yeah. And as you're walking around, there's all these pictures on the wall and you can like look at them and they'll be like, hey, here's the director. What's his name? Tramp or something like that. I can't even remember. I can't remember either. And there's pictures of, you know, whatever. And then there's a picture of like the janitor's back was where the elevator was. There's a picture of his back on the wall. And the caption was like, you know, something about, you know, we are not where we blend in or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So the Bureau of Control are like hiding in society somehow to do their job. You know, yeah. they're taking the menial job, but they're doing their bigger job as they're doing the janitorial job. But the, did you read any of the stuff? Or? I read a lot of it, yeah. So I actually read it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you should. It's really interesting. <laughs> but one of the first things you find, it's talking about how you can't bring in any outside iconic objects if you do. And you can't bring in cell phones or smart anything. Yeah, it has to be or all Or a number like, two pencil. That was also on the list of banned yeah, items. It has to be like all analog stuff, like real yeah. the real tape recorders, yeah. analog phones, nothing so, digital. So nothing modern, basically. Yeah. So when you're running through the building, everything is like old CRT green monitors and reel to reel. And they're using vacuum tubes to send messages <laughs> around. Yeah. Um, I don't even think there was a phone in there. I don't remember seeing one. But uh, I was like, oh, you can't. So it's like saying you can't bring in like iconic items. So then you go to the vending machine and it's just generic like pistachio, white package pistachio. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's weird. But as you read and, you know, go further along, it's like those items are in the cultural zeitgeist sort of. Mm -hmm. And they're very iconic. So they've taken on their own power, basically, is what I got by our idea of them projects thoughts of what they are and that might manifest into something oh yeah we don't know yet because like did you find the jukebox no in one of the side rooms there's like it's like it also reminded me of sc is that scp or whatever it is called with the monsters yeah yeah but there's also a thing on reddit with like the monster like i don't know what you'd call it where they make up fake horror stories about these creatures and how you contain them and deal with them mm -hmm. i don't know what it's called but that's what it reminded me of where it would be like you go into this one room and there's like an elevated glass platform and in the room, the glass platform is a jukebox, a huh. Wurlitzer, and it's like encased and it's like, oh, this is like an item that has taken on some sort of power and they call them. I don't even they called them altered somethings. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. That's, what they that's weird them. that I didn't see that because I thought I went in every room I could. I went I went everywhere. I found so much stuff um, and I was getting all these ideas of what was going on and I'm thinking it's reminding me of like, a, like, oh, it's, you know, this is kind of like Returnal with like the going into the old house and Returnal, like what's oh, yeah, going yeah. on. And then it's like the way they're talking about like the containment breach, like one of the things you find is like there's a containment breach. And I'm like, oh, that reminds me of the cabin in the woods when they go into <laughs> the, have you seen that movie? No, no. Oh. You should see that movie, but uh, they go into the containment center where all like the sort of f fairy tale urban legend monsters are and they're all yeah. trapped in there, you know? See, that reminded me of SCP. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. And there's a lot of documentation about how these, you know, f sort of urban legends are because of our collective knowledge of them. They sort of are real and they cause problems in the real world and the Bureau of Control is trying to like control this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of like what's going on, you know? And I was loving, I was loving just puzzling through all the stuff I found. Yeah. And looking at everything, I'd be like, what's this poster say? And I'd go into like camera mode <laughs> and zoom in and stuff like that. The it's aesthetic is very much, it's very pleasing. It did. It yeah. hits me in all the right spots where I was like, oh, man, this is good. And you can tell there's like stuff we're going to figure out. Well, obviously, there's weapon upgrading. Yeah. Because we found yep. like mods for our guns. There's going to be some sort of crafting thing going on. Yep. It's almost it's almost got some RPG elements where we level up stuff. Yeah. And 
there's also like I found these like there's house fragments and memories or something you can find. Mm-hmm. But when you go to try to read them, it's like, oh, you don't have a high enough clearance level to look <laughs> at this yet. So you don't know what they're for yet. But I'm picking them all up. Right. Yeah. But the story proceeds. We go to talk to the director and there's yeah, a whole we're essentially there to find because the Bureau of Control took our brother. Yeah. And so we were that, there to find out what the hell. Very x Files like, Yeah. What is very going X-Files. on? So apparently Jesse's from the town of Ordinary. That's what it's called. Mm. And her brother disappeared during one of these events. Mm-hmm. And she sort of saw it happen. Also Matrix eats too. Like yeah. She's seeing into what's going on behind the scenes of the yeah, world. Yeah. And her brother disappeared. She wants to try to find her brother. She's come to the Bureau of Control because she thinks that's the next stop. And she has been going for her job interview. And... She goes, has to go talk to the director. Also during this thing, Jesse's talking to herself, but also to us as the player. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. So that was a very interesting way to like have a narrative going for the game. Yeah. Where you're not, you're, you're actually in the game. Yeah. You're the one controlling her. Well, yeah. And, and it'll and be like giving her suggestions the one that on are, what to do. The first one that really stood out to me is when you go in the director's office and you see, like, oh, shit, the director's dead. He's laying on the ground. And yeah. the gun is there. And you sort of look around the room as Jesse. And she's like, oh, you want me to pick up the gun? The murder yeah. weapon? <laughs> and I was like, I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have a whole cut scene about... It's hard to tell what's going on. Very hard. The board is talking to her. And there's, like, things about the, a trial to become the director. And if you can survive, you'll be you'll be the new director. And, you know, she's sort of transfixed to be the director in her chair and she's holding the gun to her head, but she doesn't shoot herself. And it, she has the gun now or whatever. Yeah, she becomes, Jesse becomes the director. But the way it is, is like everyone, because she's the director, everyone knows she's the director. Yeah. So like she was nobody when she came in, but now that she's the director, when she meets someone, they're like, yeah, you're the director. You're the new director. Because as soon as you go out in the hallway, I'm looking around. I'm like, wait, my picture's on the wall. I'm the director? Like, the first thing is <laughs> well, I like, didn't see that. Yeah, all oh. the pictures changed, so it's Jesse on the wall. Oh, now. cool. She's the director. And I was like, I'm the director? What the fuck? <laughs> and we do some shooting and fighting, you know. Yeah, the hiss come. The hiss comes, and it's sort of taken over some people, but not everyone. Yeah. And there's implications that we don't know how the hiss moves. Is it through wireless technology is it a fungal thing like are these people that are taken over by the hiss that just sort of float are they like hot spots for the hiss to go to other people and stuff Mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. like a lot of questions that we have no idea yeah what the answer is right and we have all kinds of power like we have some sort of force power so far i'm assuming we're gonna have way more power power, later but when Later in the chapter, when I was, I finished the chapter and I was, damn it. I was like, <laughs> yep. I don't want to stop playing. So I just ran around the area yeah. we're already in. And I just started blasting everything with my force power. <laughs> and everything is destroyable. Yeah. I would like even the planters. I was smashing the concrete <laughs> onto the planters. It goes flying, breaking all the paneling off the walls, shattering all the books. And the. it was also very matrixy in that way, too. When I'm blowing and shooting and the papers are exploding off yep. the desks, I was like, wow, this is like Neo fighting in that hallway. When <laughs> yeah. the, the pillars yeah, yeah. are just exploding all around him and everything. It was super cool. Um, we meet Holly, who's... Oh, so Professor Darling, the guy that does the cutscene about the gun. Yeah. With very... You don't know anything about the gun. He's just talking about the gun. That's the guy for voice of Alan Wake. Oh, nice. As soon as he started talking, I'm like, that's Alan Wake. <laughs> so Darling's voiced by the voice actor of Alan Wake, not the face actor. Yeah. That's a different guy. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of live action in this. Yeah, there's so a bit. Yeah. Well, even a cut. There's one cut scene with Jesse. Yeah. Where she's like, oh, my God, my brain or whatever. And it cut to the real actress. Yeah. In the thing. Yeah. So that was very cool. Yeah. I sat down, like I, I went through the media and watched that entire video oh, yeah. again, but oh. like not on a screen, but like big and watched it all. It was oh, with, cool. her, with her cutscene? No, though? no, with, uh, with the, the Darling? professor. Yeah. yeah, I did that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's cool. But at, I can tell as we're playing the game, I already noticed connections to Alan Wake. Yeah. 
in the, the, the documents I'm finding because they're all redacted. Oh, yeah. Redacted. So as I'm reading it, there was one section about how it said, like, something about the urban legends and how we we um, try to send out information on our sponsored television show, Redacted. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's Night Springs from the oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's got to be what that is, right? Yeah. So I'll be interested to see what other things... And as I'm reading them, too, I'm trying to fill in, like, what did they redact? Some of them I can tell, like, oh, that said the board. Yeah. And there was one about how it was saying something about the, this is in the cultural blank. And I was like, that has to be cultural zeitgeist. And then trying to just place all the other words in there mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that really, <laughs> I was kind of like, what? We meet, um, what's her name? Um, Darling's assistant? Eden or something like Eve, that? Eden. Something like that. So she, I'm like, hi, I'm Jesse. Can, can you come out of the thing? And she, oh, director. Let me come out. And it's like, oh, they know I'm the director already. <laughs> so as the director, I tell her like, oh, I need to report on this whatever mm-hmm. phenomenon. She's like, oh, I'll write up a report for you. And then you get a new thing collectible. That's the report. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm the director and she gave me a redacted report. <laughs> Right? She just wrote it for me. It says, like, by the order of Jesse Holcomb or whatever yep. her name is. It's it's pre-redacted. And I was like, she redacted it for me? <laughs> I'm the director. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So we do a control point before we rescue her where it's like baddies have taken over this zone and we have to, like, clear out the badness mm-hmm. of the zone to, like, very video gamey. Oh, yeah. And then we can free everybody. Well, some people in that area, they're wearing these special harnesses that protected them from the hiss. Also very much like The Cell. Did you ever see or read the book The Cell? Stephen King? It's Uh, about how like cellular waves make people go crazy. No. It's also kind of like that where something happened to make everybody go crazy, but there's certain people that aren't go crazy because they didn't hear it, right? Mm -hmm. So they have these harnesses that... Had they were called Hadron Energy Emitter, I don't know. Yeah, some gobbledygook that prevented them from being transformed, and that's pretty much it for the chapter. Is mm-hmm. we do that, and then it's like we have to go find Darling for whatever reason now, yeah, because yeah. he knows about what our question was. Um, but it's funny choosing like when the cutscenes happen as Jesse talking. You have her inner dialogue as well as her spoken dialogue. She'll she'll be like, oh, she's asking me about how I got here. I should lie. And then she'll tell the truth. And then she'll be like, I should have (laughs) lied. Yeah, no, it's great. The whole all the dialogue is great. Yeah, I'm loving it a lot so far. They have very interesting sort of stories, you know, like the Alan Wake's thing was the story was so interesting. Mm -hmm. Gameplay, not so hot. But I mean, I find the gameplay and control Oh, yeah. Great Spot so on. far. Spot on. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely better than Alan Wake at fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it definitely. also was like, holy shit, I should play Quantum Break yeah. ASAP, too, because uh, that's the other one from mm-hmm. those guys. I'm sure that one's great, too. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, once the uh, chapter was done, I was looking at the DLC. Because when you first... I don't know how it works on Steam. Well, probably not, because you're Ultimate Edition. But when you go into the game, the first thing you see is like, hey, there's two DLCs. One's called Awe and one's called something else. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'll think about the DLCs later, right? So once I finished, I was looking at the Microsoft store and I'm like, oh, there's DLCs are on sale for like, whatever, 50, 75% off. They're like $4 <clears> each, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm already loving this game, so I'll buy it now. And if I want to play it and then I look and it's like, oh, they just add like side missions and like different weapons and stuff like that hmm. so i was like oh okay <laughs> a side mission is good i yeah. like that yeah, more content for me to do. yeah for sure so i'm excited to play more for sure yeah me too i was very disappointed that it ended so soon i, know. I was so into it i know it sucked but that's the way she cookie crumbles i think going forward as we unlock different like talents or abilities or whatever it's going to be more side missions and stuff because oh, yeah. We have our crafting, it seems, and yep. weapon modding. I put a mod on my gun that gave me uh, more faster reload if I do headshots or something like mm-hmm. that. 
And then I found another one that was like, I can't even remember what it was. It healed me or something. I'm not sure, but I modded mine for my faster reload. Cause that's the one thing is like you fire the gun down to empty and it's like, Holy, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> load faster. So I'm sure we're going to have some sort of ability to speed that up yeah. or different weapons. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm sure we'll get more force powers and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm loving it. Yeah, me too. This is the first game uh-huh. that uh, Danae has sat and oh, played with me you. from start to finish. I was going to ask you. For the first chapter. Was she watching yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. She loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Um, yeah, I was loving it. So, yeah. like, I, like I said earlier, I was playing it full graphics yeah, yeah. and full DLSS. Oh, yeah. And so, but uh, like... The only time I noticed it, like uh, right at the start of the game, I was looking at the uh, the warning monitors and everything was crispy clear. And then the further I went into the game, the blurrier those monitors got and I couldn't read them at one point. It was just like a blurry smear. Oh, like, really? Okay, well, that's weird. I wonder why that's happening. And then you get, when we get to the control point, yeah. cleanse the control point, and the door to the uh, mm-hmm. to the vault bunker, yeah, or whatever the freak. Yeah, bunker, yeah. It, it was just like... Uh, uh, like two pixels I was like what oh, is happening so what are these textures yeah something and was so, wrong like when the um, well I can't remember what her name is when she came out uh, I was looking at the model her model and yeah. I was like why does this look so terrible was it like flat shaded it was basically? like yeah it was like flat shaded like just no lips just like teeth moving around I'm like what the hell is going on yeah and so I was like looking through my graphics settings so I took DLSS off yeah. and all of a sudden boom everything's fine oh weird it's still at full chooch huh that's weird. So the like AI was just fucking it up. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, like it's supposed to make it. Crispy she looked like Fire Marshal Bill. Do you remember yeah, Fire Marshal Bill? And like looking at Jesse's model, like any of the close-up shots, mm-hmm. the eyeballs were like, like 4K, amazing. Oh, yeah. And the rest of her face was like, why are her eyebrows like five pixels? What's oh, happening yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it was the DLSS just like not working properly. That's crazy. It was strange. Yeah, I'm playing the original, so I'm doing it like 30 FPS. Yeah. The legendary or whatever edition is like 60 FPS, hmm. but it was also $70. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I'll spend $8. <laughs> I'm surprised that it runs so well on the 2060 upstairs at full chooch. Well, with full ray tracing. It's a old game. It is. Yeah. But so, still full ray tracing. I'm yeah. like, oh man, this still works really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks good on the Series X, but it's an Xbox One game that's just sort of been... It's like backwards compatible, yeah. so it doesn't look that good, but it's it's fine. Yeah, it's serviceable. I just was like, I'll play it on Xbox. Yeah, eh. <laughs> get those achievements, you know. Yeah, super loving it. Just can't can't wait yeah. to play more. I love that all the I read all the stuff I found. It's very interesting, and you know, seeing like there was a, you know, one of the letters was like from the director or to the director about someone's birthday and how they're turning 45. Maybe it was about his wife or something like that. Yeah. There's also one I found about how the building we're in is called the oldest house. Yeah. And it's kind of like some, I don't know what it is. It's like the back rooms where things are not as they seem. And some guy was complaining about how he finally made it to the access to the executive bathroom after doing like a tour of, he was in Islamabad for like seven years and he's finally got the key to the executive bathroom and now it's moved and no one has been able to find where the executive bathroom is or move <laughs> it back. And he just wants to know where it is because he thinks he can, he's, he deserves to have an executive shitter now. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what's going on. Yep. Me too. Especially to see like, what's the deal with the jukebox? What's the deal with things? of Oh, the thing of power they were talking about was like, like a rubber duck. <laughs> Which also made me think of like, it made me think of like Inception, where you're supposed to have your idea of an item in your head that you don't tell anybody about. Yeah. Like DiCaprio has his top or whatever, you know, and then you'll know if it's a dream. If you can, I don't remember how it went. If you, if you have that top, you know, when you're in a dream or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm in, super intrigued to see yeah, exactly what's going sure. on with it. For sure. If you're not playing, you're made a big fucking mistake <laughs> yeah if you guys want to play along with us uh, you're more than welcome to do so yep. we will be playing chapter two yep uh of the main storyline quests mm-hmm. and yeah there's a 
Discord link down below. Yep. And in that Discord, it's the Purple Room Studios Discord, where we are recording this lovely podcast. Uh, you can get in there, and there will be a forum post with control, yep. and you can just you can share your experiences on the chapter and how you felt about the chapter and all that too. You can also interact with us live at twitch.tv forward slash streamvoidpod. Yeah. You can get in there. You can get in with us, and we will talk about the the game with you live on stream. Yes. Please do. Please do. And yes, uh, patreon.com forward slash You can get in there. You can throw money at the screen. You can support these two guys. Yes, exactly. Um, 